Welcome to episode 208 of the Pharmacist Voice podcast. I'm the host, Kim Newlove. Today, we're talking about the four Ds, delete, delay, delegate, and diminish. If you're new to this podcast, welcome. I am a pharmacist by training, but I'm not in clinical practice anymore. I made a career transition to voice actor and podcast host. As a voice actor, I help my clients get their point across in the medical space. Among other things, I provide medical narration to clients in the pharmaceutical, biotech, and continuing medical education industries. If you have a project in mind, please contact me through my website, thepharmacistvoice.com. Why did I become a voice actor? I was inspired by my nonverbal son who has autism to combine my background as a pharmacist with my speaking voice and launch my business, The Pharmacist Voice, in 2017. My son, Craig, helped me realize the power of having a voice and using it. What do I typically talk about on this podcast? I have solo shows and I have interview shows. My solo podcast episodes are about some aspect of being a pharmacist, a voice actor, a pharmacist podcaster, or my career transition from pharmacist to voice actor and podcast host. Today's topic relates to all four of those, by the way. My interview shows feature a variety of people who use their voices to advocate for something, educate in some way, or entertain so that you are inspired to use your voice too. My listeners are typically pharmacists, pharmacy students, pharmacy technicians, pharmacy professors, pharmacist podcasters, and medical narrators. But of course, everyone is welcome to listen. You can find the show notes for this episode on my website, thepharmacistvoice.com. Just click on the podcast tab and search for episode 208. All right, let's get started talking about the four Ds. One more time, what are the four Ds? Delete, delay, delegate, and diminish. Why are we talking about these today? It's a great question. It's because I've been crazy busy lately, and the four Ds help me manage my time. I'm hoping to make a connection with you here on the topic of time management. I don't know about you, but... I kind of struggle with time management. Don't get me wrong, I actually love this topic, but I'm always trying to improve. I just, I have too much going on and I struggle. Maybe something that I say today might help you. What's my baseline? All right, how do I organize my time and how do I organize my to-dos right now? I use a spiral-bound notebook very high-tech, right? (laughs) It's actually very old school, I know, but it works for me. And what I do is on each page, every page is a day, okay? I have three broad categories on my to-do list. First is errands, appointments, and outings. Second is projects. And third is communications. To expand so you understand a little better, The errands, appointments, and outings is stuff that either gets me out of the house, like going to the gym, or is scheduled, like attending a meeting. The second category is projects. On that list of things that I have to do project-wise is always making sure that beds are made, doing the dishes, washing, drying, and folding laundry, doing dinner prep, recording a podcast might be something, you know, on a particular day, doing my taxes, and then whatever my priorities of the day are. So there's some stuff that's always on there, but then, of course, there are new priorities every day. And finally, the third category, which is communications, includes just that, okay? Phone calls, emails, texts, and snail mail. I don't know about you, but there are always more things for me to do in a day than I have time. If it weren't for the four Ds, I tell you, I would get even less done. So I'm passing along the four Ds as a life hack, a life hack that has helped me as a pharmacist, a voice actor, a podcast host, and a busy second career individual who happens to be a very supportive wife and a busy mom. How did I learn the four Ds in the first place? Well, 
let's take a trip down memory lane, shall we? The year was 2008, and I had a preschooler with autism, a husband that worked and went out of town internationally for work. I had a toddler who was not even in preschool yet. His name's Derek. A part-time job as a pharmacist at Walgreens, and I had a full-time job as a wife and mom. I was pretty busy, okay? Now, I was really struggling to even put together a to-do list on a piece of notebook paper. I didn't even use the spiral-bound notebooks back in 2008. I was looking for help, and I found what I needed in a book called Time Management from the Inside Out. It is by an author named Julie Morgenstern. Have you ever heard of Julie Morgenstern? This is going back 15 years, so if you haven't heard of her, I don't blame you. It's okay. But I must say, if you read the jacket on the book, it'll tell you that Julie's famous. She is a famous professional organizer and author. She has been on The Oprah Winfrey Show, The Today Show, Good Morning America, and NPR, just to name a few. She gets into the psychology of why we do the things we do and how to take action on organizing everything from your physical space, you know, the things in your life, to how we spend our time, to, you know, habits that hold us back. She gets into the psychology of all these things, and she helps you organize your life. I love Julie. I craved structure and order in my hectic life, I'm sure you can imagine. And over the past 15 years, I have worked towards managing my time better. I have come a long way. Hopefully, something that I'm talking about today will resonate with you and maybe help you too. What ended up helping me? I would say that writing everything down on pieces of notebook paper at first and eventually the spiral-bound notebooks, and then estimating how long it takes to do these tasks, setting priorities, and being realistic about my available time versus how much time it takes to do this stuff. I mean, really, sometimes there's quite the disparity. And then using the four Ds. Those, all those things have helped. Writing it down, making estimates, setting priorities, being realistic, and then having the four Ds. Now, at this time, I'd like to share some stories with you about how the four Ds have helped me, specific stories. Now, this first story has to do with pharmacy continuing education requirements, pharmacy CE, as I like to call it. I'm embarrassed to admit this, but uh, I have to have a vulnerable moment here. Until I found a CE strategy that worked for me, I used to have way too many subscriptions and memberships. This is not uncommon for new practitioners. I graduated with my BS Farm from the University of Toledo in 2001. One thing they did not really teach us in pharmacy school was what kind of CE to do. Where do you find it? How much should you do? Which sources? Should you go to live conferences, subscribe to newsletters, uh, subscribe to journals, you know? Anyways, you, you have to figure these things out on your own. So anyways, I had way too many subscriptions and memberships. Of the four Ds, delete and diminish helped me find a strategy for earning CE that was right for me. It took a few years. I have subscribed to Pharmacist Letter, Drug Topics, and many, many others. I have also belonged to national, state, and local pharmacy groups, including APHA, the American Pharmacists Association, OPA, the Ohio Pharmacists Association, and TAP, the Toledo Academy of Pharmacy, which is my local pharmacy group. Just to name a few, those are some that I had joined. The bottom line is that I had way too many subscriptions and memberships and not enough time to enjoy them. If this sounds like you, you're not alone. I want to support these publishers and I want to support these organizations. I get it. But the guilt about seeing things pile up and membership renewals coming my way and I had not engaged, it really bothered me. Especially in 2001 when we had paper journals and newsletters. They would just pile up. I was such a, a hoarder. <laughs> not that bad, but I mean, I would have 12-inch piles of paper journals and newsletters. I would let two years go by and then I'd let myself off the hook and I would finally recycle them. 
nowadays things come to your email inbox and I don't know about you, but it, you know, if you delete it, you don't feel as guilty because you don't see it over and over again. But then in that moment when you delete something you haven't looked at, there's that moment of guilt too. It, it's tough being a human, isn't it? Anyways, it was kind of overwhelming to have all these subscriptions and memberships and not fully enjoy them or engage. I'm sure you can imagine. I needed to find some balance. What did I do about it, though? Well, seeing that I had so many CE opportunities and not enough time, I deleted some of my subscriptions. I ended some subscriptions. And I diminished my involvement with pharmacist organizations. Instead of belonging to a national, state, and local one, I just switched to the state one. As far as delaying things and delegating things, I I couldn't really delay my CE needs. (laughs) I really needed to renew my license, you know, and I couldn't delegate the CE to someone else. You can't let somebody else do it for you. That's called cheating. So I didn't do any delaying or delegating. I only used two out of the four Ds. Now, 22 years after I graduated, here I am. I I get almost all of my CE now from the Ohio Pharmacists Association annual and mid-year meetings. I get plenty of CE there. The new practitioner in me back in 2001 would probably have loved to talk to the, the practitioner that I am now. I'm not even in clinical practice, but I still am a pharmacist. But I wish I could talk to my younger self and say, it's okay to only pay for what you have time to enjoy. It's nice to support publishers. It's nice to support organizations. But if you can't handle the guilt, apply the four Ds. In summary, in the year 2023, I meet my license renewal requirements, and I feel a lot less overwhelmed by the number of opportunities that I sign up for. I only sign up for what I use. Next topic. As a voice actor, I get overwhelmed by opportunity overload. I'm sure you've heard of that before, right? Too many opportunities, not enough time to take advantage of the opportunities, right? I have opportunities to audition for jobs. I have opportunities to have meetings with people who are creative directors so I can pitch myself to them. I have opportunities to contact previous clients and ask for more work. I suffer from opportunity overload. This is kind of a good problem to have, but of the four Ds, I had to pick one that I apply to this specific problem. I could have probably applied a couple, but I have chosen to apply delay to this problem, this problem of opportunity overload. The word delay is helping me most as a voice actor right now. I am trying to delay getting too busy with my voiceover business until my younger son, Derek, goes off to college in August. I cannot believe I have a kid leaving for college this August, but I do. I am exactly as busy as I thought I would be during his senior year. That's right. I am a busy mom. I am already the full-time caregiver for my adult son with autism. His name's Craig. But in addition, when it comes to Derek— I'm gearing up for track season and prom. I'm encouraging him to fill out scholarship applications. I'm planning his graduation party, which oddly, let me tell you, reminds me of planning a wedding reception. And I'm also working my way through all the college-related stuff. If you are a parent of somebody who has gone off to college, God bless you, because it's a lot of work. It's All this stuff keeps coming at me. Financial aid stuff. New student events housing applications, food option plans, moving day, and so much more. College stuff is new to me, and I'm a little overwhelmed because I've already got all this other stuff. What can I do about it? I can delay ramping up my business even more until Derek leaves for college in August. As I record this, it is March. I've got five months left with my son, and then he goes off. And we all know that things are never the same when the kids come home after they go off to college. I really want to be there for him for all the good stuff that's happening here during the senior year. I'm sure you understand. I just need to delay some business opportunities. That was a highly personal story. Let's move on to podcasting. As a podcaster, I am choosing to diminish some episodes. I'm being more intentional about making episodes shorter. 
My interviews are fun. I get to talk to people and ask them questions, get to know them, but sometimes the length gets out of hand. Until I find myself a little less busy, I am challenging myself to keep both the solo and interview episodes short. Diminish is the D that we're talking about here. I'm diminishing the length. Now let's talk about delegating. Delegating helps me as a second career individual. In addition to running a business, I'm a wife and a mom. I can do it all, but not all at the same time, so I need help. My husband and kids are not mind readers, okay, and they don't always know what I need. So I have to try really hard to communicate to them in advance, of course, that I need help. Not only do I need help, but I need specific help. Like Nathan, who's my husband. I need you to put the laundry in the dryer at 2 o'clock. Or Nathan, before you go to bed, we need to talk about Craig's summer school opportunities. One of the things that I say to Derek is, Derek, I need you to take out the trash. Or Derek... We need to talk about financial aid stuff on Saturday afternoon around 1.30. You know, you got to make it specific and time-bound and all the smart things, right? Now, Craig, he's my tricky child, but if I ask him to do something that he knows how to do, he's all about helping me. Like, hey, Craig, can you get some spaghetti out of the pantry for me? Or, hey, Craig, can you take out that box of recyclables? He's on it. He can do that. As far as delegating for my business, I have hired people that were not in my life before I started a business, and I have delegated tasks to those people. For one thing, I hired an accountant. I don't know if you have an accountant, but I hired a woman, and she's fantastic. She does my taxes. Now, when I started narrating audiobooks, I hired an audio engineer to double-check my work. I delegated the meeting specifications task to her. Whether you're talking about taxes or audio engineering, delegating is important and it can take some things off your plate. As I've gone into my second career here, I have noticed that I like to do some stuff kind of quick and dirty. That's another way of saying diminish, okay? I like to do some things quick and dirty because I would like to use my time for other things that make me money. So, One of the things that I do is I make lists, reusable lists. I'm sure you do this too, but here we go. I travel for my job as a medical narrator, and I have diminished the task of packing by creating a reusable packing list. Maybe you have one of these packing lists too. I keep it with my packing cubes, so whenever it's time to travel, I pull out the list, I pack just what I need, And then I end up spending less time packing. It's all good all around. I hope those examples give you some insights into my life and into the four Ds and how they have helped me. We all have to find ways to stay organized and manage our time. For me, spiral-bound notebooks, lists, estimating how long it takes to do things, prioritizing, and using the four Ds really helps me. The four Ds, one more time, are delete, delay, delegate, and diminish. If you want to learn more about time management and the four Ds from Julie Morgenstern, I want you to read Time Management from the Inside Out. Great read. Thank you for listening to episode 208 of the Pharmacist's Voice podcast. Please visit thepharmacistsvoice.com to read the show notes. In the show notes today, you'll find a link to Time Management from the Inside Out by Julie Morgenstern, the Ohio Pharmacists Association annual conference link, my social media links, and more. If you know someone who would like this episode and needs to hear about the four Ds, please share it with them. And if you like this podcast, please subscribe to or follow the Pharmacist Voice podcast on your favorite podcast player and YouTube to get each new episode right when it comes out. I'll be back next Friday, March 24th with an interview with Marisol Martinez. She's a public health service pharmacist. Thanks again for listening. I'll talk to you next week.